as you hear, we're going to take this part in English. Um, and we're so help, happy to welcome you all here today. Um, and uh, we just want to know which municipalities and which countries you represent. Can you tell the audience? Mm -hmm. oh, I'll start with my name. Mm -hmm. I'm Florence. I come from Kenya, Kajiado County. And uh, our visit to Umio uh, has been uh, initiated through a partnership that Kajiado County is partnering with Umio on sustainable development. And uh, it's a good thing that we were coming to formalize the partnership and the, this event was happening. And I'm glad to be here with you. Thank you. I am Dorothy Mutuku. I come from Kenya, Machakos County. I've been in a project between Machakos and Robert Foss. Uh, we had a project on youth and democracy. Uh, it ended in February 2015, and we are now doing another project on sustainable development. Thank you. I'm Ruth Mutua. I'm from Kenya, Machakos County. Uh, in Machakos County, I'm county minister, handing the Minister of Agriculture, Lands and Urban Development. Uh, we came here with Dorothy, still on the same project, but this is my first time to be Sweden, and I'm so much excited. Thank you. Yvonne Nyango. Uh, I work with uh, partnerships um, and uh, I coordinate um, Omeo Kajado uh, collaboration. I also work for an NGO on renewable energy projects in Kenya. It's uh, not my first time to be here, so it's always um, uh, a good learning process, uh, especially the number of years that are. Uh, um, I have been in this country and uh, it has helped me to change a lot of things in, this, in the way that I do things and I also try to communicate the same and see what, uh, uh, how I can dis uh, disseminate the same uh, to other people. Thank you so much. Yvonne, yeah. you have a background from a university. Yes. From, from where? From uh, Mount Kenya University. Yes. And now you're a contact person for other universities that, we're, that we are sending the exhibitions to. Just right. say something about what you have experienced when you saw the exhibition now putting up here in Umeå. Okay, I will take it back to 2013 when I first uh, heard about this project. And uh, I was, uh, of course, it was through um, Ingvar, whom I have worked with previously and still working with on other projects. Uh, when he introduced the, pro uh, the project to me and uh, when I was here, I came at a time that Mark Edwards was also here. So we had a session and he explained to me what the pro project is all about and how we need to engage universities in Kenya and Africa to be part of this uh, noble cause. So going back home with the idea, I had not quite gotten really what we needed to do. And uh, I struggled a bit and shared with uh, a number of universities like for two years, nothing much happened because they could not grasp the concept. So uh, there's a time I remember when uh, Ingvar came down and uh, with him together we went to one university in Nairobi and uh, hearing it from you know, somebody who understood the concept better made it easier and we started getting some interest from uh, some university. But uh, nothing happened for, uh, for, uh, for like some time and then there was again quiet, um, uh, qui uh, quiet period. So we knew that there was, uh, the climax was uh, 2015 and really the universities uh, needed to sign up and participate fully. So with that, now that I'm working closely with county governments, I took the concept uh, to the county that I'm working in. And 
uh, we got uh, interest from two, one university and uh, one college. Because we also want to uh, encourage colleges uh, because the perception that we have that most colleges are for failures, universities are for, you know, those people who aim for um, white collar jobs, mm. uh, whereas colleges are for the technical team. So we are trying to get that out of them that, yes, even them, mm. they can work with these issues. Yvonne, so. I think Mark can share with you that it's quite hard, we have to say, to communicate with universities because it's not so simple. It's not. Mm -hmm. But if you don't communicate with the students yeah. from a bottom-up perspective, but coached and sponsored by the leadership, yeah. so nothing will happen. But that's the entrance. Yes. So, so good luck with the students. Yeah. So it's, it's been really lovely having you here. And we had um, a talk yesterday yep. where we got to meet you all. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were supposed to look at the exhibition, but unfortunately <laughs> it was raining so much yesterday. And it's still raining. Yep. But I hope that uh, you, get, you got the opportunity to at least walk along and just look at the photos, because that's what we're going to discuss right now. Mm. Um, do you want to share something about yeah, that? Yeah, there's something. Yeah. Uh, it just came uh, when we were having lunch with my colleagues, and um, I just wanted to mention that uh, I really appreciate the approach that uh, whole earth and the organizers, the founder and the organizers took to use uh, students in learning institutions to campaign for sustainability. Uh, we, there has been a lot of uh, discussions, uh, deliberate, uh, deliberations, resolutions from the Kyoto Protocol to now the SDGs. Uh, our leaders, nothing has really happened. It's not that they, did, they do not know, but using the students, I think it's going to be a big and a great campaign mm -hmm. to um, bring positive mm -hmm. change in the world. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. So, um, so when, when we're talking about uh, using students and um, using young people who are actually, as we've been repeating all day, like 50, more than 50% of the world's population is under 25. What, what do you feel is the, um, is there a challenge to get uh, young people to join? I mean, we're a wonderful group of people here today, but we see that there are many uh, unfilled seats. Um, what are the challenges um, in your counties to en make students engage? We all agree that this is a new concept, and uh, for a new concept to be engraved and fully accepted, you'd expect that not everyone comes on board immediately. So the main question here is, now that we have the right target group, how do we communicate this? Do we put it in the syllabus for them to grow knowing that this is part of us and this is how we have to do it? Or which other formula do we use? Of course, depending on the uh, unique challenges in unique areas. That is the biggest question. But the target group of the students is the best way. They will grow with it. They are the f leaders of tomorrow. And they look at things knowing that I am part of this. I'm not looking at somebody else to do it. It is me. So that would be the be it's the best thing that can mm -hmm. ever happen. Yeah. Be the change you want to see the in the change. world. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Florence. Do you want to share Dorothy? Uh, okay, right. she, she probably you. said it. Ruth? Yeah, I want to comment on this approach because as she said, there are so many declarations. I remember we went Millennium Development Goals, many other laws which have come all through, but you realize the gap between the developing world and the developed world has continued to enlarge. Maybe it's the kind of approach we use. The leaders could be using the wrong approach. So using uh, the young ones who have brains and the ones who are going to be left behind by the old people, I think it's, uh, it's commendable. And I know this can work. So I appreciate this concept and as she said, we need to think of 
how do we approach all the other stakeholders to buy in this concept so that they can appreciate what the youth is doing. Because sometimes you find the political will, it's very important. Because mm -hmm. if it's not there, then when it comes to implementation, it again does like what has happened with the other declarations. So political will is very important here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I can hold it for a while. Um, who does want to uh, pose the next question? Ni får ställa frågor på svenska också, så kan jag översätta. Helt tomt. Oh. <laughs> well, um, we can just uh, say a few words um, about about the uh, exhibition. So um, we've been talking about um, we we need to find the political will. Uh, we can work from below. Um, and reach the majority population, um, but um, we have to work in different ways. Uh, so, how uh, how do you feel that we can interact with um, culture and photo exhibitions? I've seen you you all work a lot with technology, uh, using photographs to convey your image. Um, uh, do you think there's um, there's something from that you can? you can take with you for the students in your counties and, and for, uh, f uh, for when the, the exhibition is uh, coming to your universities? Okay, personally, I think uh, the Indonesian mm -hmm. video, I think that was very powerful. Sorry? Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. The Indonesian uh, uh, video, it was very powerful. And uh, if we could use that just to show them that this is how they need to do it, but their way, I'm sure we'll have a lot of um, uh, participation from uh, many universities in Kenya. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the matters of environment, if I might just give a small story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was born in a certain village of Kenya, a remote area. But those days we used to have a lot of rain. Food was plenty. But as time went on, we cut down trees. And now the place is dry. There's erratic rain. We are not getting enough food. So it's something which I'm feeling the whole earth will make an impact. And if we use our young people to show the importance of sustainability, we cut down trees and we plant more trees for the future. It's a great thing. Okay. Uh, the approach you've done on this exhibition is wonderful. And it is uh, reaching the right group, the youth, the young people have the energy have the will and they have the potential. Um, when we go back to the other side, as I initiate the program with our youth, um, sure, it is going to work because it is them who are feeling the impact. The aged generation have got the resources, have got the education, have got everything. The young, the youth, upcoming generation, they do not have the resources. The environment, the climatic change is really hitting on them. A Kenyan population, the uh, greater percentage relies on agriculture as the main source of income. When the rains are not there, when the prolonged droughts are, th are there, uh, they have their livestock is dying. Then crops are failing every other moment, and they are not going to school well because. They have to take a lot of time going to search for water and doing all that. So it is as the youth who are really affected. And I'm sure the moment I introduce this, it will be really appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. The other avenue would get this information down to, the, to Kenya and to African continent is the postings in the YouTube. 
and they can see oh it's one voice and as it is together we can can mm. do it yeah oh, thank you florence that's wonderful okay i want to say one one last comment uh it's been wonderful having you on stage um, and I just want to fill in something that Ruth said to, you said to me yesterday, if you remember. Um, I, I asked you, uh, when, when I say sustainability, what do you think of? And you said, the first thing that comes to mind is long term. And that's what we, we've been thinking, uh, we've been talking about today. Um, that we've been making decisions that have short term effects. But what we're all calling for, everyone's on, everyone on stage today has been calling for um, that we're thinking ahead. We're thinking long term. We think, we think about uh, next generations. And Doug was talking about um, how we humans have an ab ability to take care for our children. Um, and we really need to, and the young generations also need to look for our future grandchildren. So thank you. Thank you.